Common Cause was an organization that was created by John Gardner, who had been Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, I think it was then, in the Johnson administration. And he always said that one of the things that he saw as, as a, you know, in this powerful position was that everyone was organized but the people. And he saw back then that the lobbyist, the moneyed interest, mm -hmm. those were the people who had a say in what was going on because they were organized even then uh, to uh, affect public policy. And so he decided he wanted to start an organization that would represent the people so that the people would have a voice or at least a small voice in some of the public policy. So it was a membership organization they were very proud of the fact that they did not take uh, corporate contributions or even foundation I contributions. Remember. So they decide, I presume, I don't mean to presume anything, what are you hard to do at, at, uh, <laughs> at Common Cause? Uh, uh, they were actually looking for someone to create an organizational magazine. And I said to them, I would be interested in starting a, you know, an issues magazine for you, a, a magazine that did investigative reporting on the issues that you're concerned about, because I could see all sorts of stories. You know, my mind was just, uh, it was thrilling to think about all the kinds of stories that could be done that weren't being done on campaign finance. I mean, that was not a big issue at the time mm -hmm. in the early 80s. Uh, there were just all kinds of stories that I could see that could be done and that would that could be done in a journalistic way and published in a magazine and uh, advance certainly the agenda of Common Cause because they would be ref sure, but not be partisan or uh, one-sided articles. David Cohen was the president David. at the oh, time okay. sure. <clears throat> and Fred was the senior vice president but uh, they didn't believe me. I mean really? they were like, I mean I can remember Fred saying to me uh, who is going to take you seriously? Uh, do you really think people are going to answer your phone calls? Uh, do you think you're going to call up on the hill and people are going to... But he said, you know, you think you can do this? Give it a shot. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> and that they have a little money, obviously, to do this. I mean, that, did you have a staff? How, how did you... Very small uh, staff. The use of freelancers? Uh, no, we almost all of it was staff done. Oh, really? Jacqueline Sharkey was the only freelancer we used that I can recall, maybe one or two others. But uh, I knew what was most, what was most, one of the most important things to me was to do important stories. But even more important was that whatever we did was correct, was sure. right, was accurate. Because we couldn't afford, I mean, I understood that anything we published would reflect eventually on the organization. And if there was anything wrong, uh, that could uh, affect the entire credibility of the organization. And so I learned that in order to actually have people spend the kind of time that you needed them to spend, you know, when you're paying freelancers, you don't, pay, for the most part, they don't get paid. Mm -hmm. what they would get paid if they were on staff. Right. And I couldn't afford to pay freelancers uh, for the kind of time I needed to be put into a story, to an investigative story. And it, it, I didn't have the same kind of uh, con control, for want of a better word, of making sure that it was done by the highest standards and that, it was, uh, that people would spend the time to make sure that it was as accurate as possible. And I took that responsibility very, very seriously. I mean, I, in editing the magazine, every major story, I went over every line of the story with the reporter and asked not only is this accurate on its face, but what underpins, mm -hmm. you know, what's the reporting that underpins your having stated this in this way to make sure that that was fair or accurate? Because as you know, I mean, you can, Right. You can write things that are factually true, but not necessarily accurate. Yeah, and we should note, uh, it's also a type of uh, investigative reporting about power and about money and about the decision-making process in Washington that at that moment, pretty much very few people were doing. So you, you 
very quickly create your own niche, essentially, is, appears to me is what happened. You start this in 1980. Mm -hmm. In 1987, you win the highest uh, award for a magazine in America, the General Excellence Award for a magazine. In just seven years, you go from not existing uh, all the way to the top. It's the largest circulation uh, political magazine in America, 250,000 mm -hmm. readers, right? So that's quite impressive. Uh, it's in, in fact, it's never been done in that speed that I'm aware of. 